Ja bin nicht so froh, dass ich nicht so gerne bin, aber ich habe auch nicht so gerne bin. Alle sind die Kuh folgen auf Facebook. Alle sind die Kuh folgen auf Facebook. And many of them, many of them are troubled. So, unfortunately, many of those who follow me, I don't know them. They are troubled. So, <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, sometimes your views are being taken into consideration. Sometimes well. Uh, yes. So I want to know from your side. Um. I know you are making a lot of efforts. Uh, for this uh, thing to be kept. Uh, when you go to um. Uh, I've forgotten the country, but President, uh, where you go from seven. Uh, he can't sell us uh, let me say, he stopped all betting companies yes. in his country. Yes. So um, I want to know, uh, in your case, to uh, stop this kind of activity in Ghana here, yes, yes. have you been in touch with uh, some of the major stakeholders that when you speak to them, uh, they can probably make impact so that uh, this kind of activity is being banned in the country? Oh. Because it's becoming a problem. Please give him a round of applause. Serious countries are banning sports betting. He mentioned Uganda. In Uganda, you can't sports bet because Uganda is a serious country. There are other countries, Brazil, and I think uh, Mr. President just look at how Brazil is. Brazil produces the best footballers on earth. They give Barcelona and Real Madrid more players than Ghana does. But they've banned sports betting. So why would you bet your life away? Because mind you is playing against Arsenal. China. And I showed you a sports betting center by a Chinese investor in Ghana. In China, you can't do sports betting. Because China is a serious country. You can imagine, if the youth were wasting time betting, would they be able to come with a tech giant like Huawei? They wouldn't be able to do that. Would they be able to come with the equipment to do mining, as we see in Ghana? They wouldn't be able to do that. So as they progress, they are telling you, oh, your youth can relax. It's easy to make money. So it is up to our leaders to wake up. It's a conspiracy. Africa has suffered enough over the centuries. Only Africans, we were enslaved. After slavery, we were colonized. Now that we should break away from the jinx of backwardness, they are hanging around our necks, this albatross called sports betting. So while they ban sports betting, which is an evil practice, in their own countries, they are nodding you, giving you the nudge to want to do sports betting. Other countries that have taken very strong steps against sports betting include the following. I'll mention them, and then I'll tell you what we are doing to tackle this issue. The United Arab Emirates, Qatar, other countries, Egypt, Sudan, Somalia, Brunei, Lebanon, Jordan, Kuwait, and other countries are working assiduously against sports betting. So it's evil. And our campaign is multi-layered. Now we are engaging you for you to understand the harm of sports betting. At some point, you will start engaging policy makers. As we engage you, we engage them at the same time. Legislators who work for Ghana's parliament. So that there can be a law that will curb you know, sports betting, alcoholism, the sale of tobacco. These are societal challenges most policymakers around the world face. But in Ghana, because we are a poor third world country, somebody thinks that if a sports betting center comes in, into my area, if I charge $20,000 for five years for an office space, the sports betting center can give me two times or three times that. So property owners are stakeholders in this as well. Because you just don't conjure a sports betting center. You rent it from a property owner. That is why we are engaging people on all fronts so that we can try our best. We can't do too much. We can only try our best to raise awareness about this crippling menace. I hope your question is answered. Please do. Okay, our ladies have gotten more confident now. Yes. Thank you. 
Our sister is asking about lottery. Uh, I think what is bad is bad. But you know, society spawns or pawns different, you know, names or gives a different imagery to what is an intrinsic problem. I think it is lottery that begets sports betting. Many years ago, it was difficult for a right-minded person to go to the lotto kiosk. And the old men and women who were staking lotto would do it under the cover of darkness. They didn't want somebody to see them stake lotto because of the stigma. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us a short formula that Al-Husnu, Al-Birru Husnu Al-Khulq. Wal-Ithmu Mahaka fi nafsika wa karehta an yatali'a alayhi al-nas. Righteousness is good character. And a sin is anything that makes your heart constricted. And you are shy that people will find out. Imam in his presentation asks us, what do we do on our phones when we are alone? And when you do negative things on your phone, as soon as somebody is watching, you press the button so that the screen goes blank. blank. But if you are reading an article, you would want to share the article with people. So when you do anything and you try to hide it from people, chances are it is bad. But I'm surprised that when it comes to visa lottery, everybody wants to go to America, and I understand that. Visa lottery, nobody speaks against visa lottery. Anything that involves casting a lot, there are serious reservations we have. So my sister, my simple answer to your question is, sports betting is bad, lottery is as bad as sports betting. But this is a very difficult fight because we have a whole authority that oversees lottery in Ghana, the NLA, National Lottery Authority. And I'm told they are flush with cash. They have a lot of money because it's a trick. When a hundred people bet, maybe one wins. And the money of the 99 losers would go to the sports betting campaigns. So it's a trick. You buy and sell to make profit. You provide a service to make profit. It is unnatural for you to do nothing to make money. It defies the laws of nature. So lottery is bad. Sports betting is bad as well. First of all, I will commend you for the efforts you have put in to keep this particular bad happiness before us also. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, with regards to the uh, betting or the uh, lotto, you see, the government, uh, the user, they've, they've been involved in it already before the uh, sports betting came in. They've been involved in it. Um, and it's not only the use, even the old ones are even engaged in that. Too. So the sports betting came just to serve as an avenue to enhance the government issue. Yes. yes. And then, you see the youth sometimes when you explain these theories to them that it is not good to, to gamble. The Quran is frowns against this. Some of them, and then just recently I was uh, arguing with one brother and he was saying that he was praying for Allah to help him win premier bets. Can you imagine? How would he even say the prayer? I yeah. don't know how he would say it. And then to add the insult to injury, he may even recite Fatia on top of it. Yeah, you see, he's praying to Allah to grant him success in the bed. Wow. Whilst Allah can give you more than what he said, can give you from the Allah sources, you understand? Yeah. He isn't praying for that, but he's praying for to win bed. Okay. And whilst I was trying to explain this thing to the person, he's saying that he don't have a Budiba or he don't have a Java. Uh, it's like you can see that they are taking it uh, as something that is normal. Yes. But my, uh, my question is that 
all these uh, measures we are putting in place. If we have to uh, rely only on the theories, it will be very difficult. Uh, I want to ask whether if you have any practical ways to be able to put a, a stop to this particular in relation with regards to the youth, okay. not the authorities. The practicality is the engagements we continue to do with people. And eventually, what we seek to achieve is legislation banning sports betting. If as a country we become you, like Uganda, we become like China, we become like Brazil, then these sports betting companies will all be shut down. And we're also looking at peaceful protestation. Because in our part of the world, if you continue sending petitions, nobody hears you. Uh, you remember the hijab issue when our sisters came out there was some result so these communities that are plagued with these betting centers at some point may have to raise banners and placards calling on government to take out those betting centers from their communities and uh, so we'll get there it's going to be a long battle but i think we'll get there yes okay Um, well, I have two questions. The first one is we are talking about banning this, but it's like we are not discussing after banning it, maybe those that they have employed. What is the way for them? Especially Lima, for instance, when you go here, yes. almost all those who are waiting for them are all those men. And the last time so I was even went into work, though, I saw one old man. And just around water, man will be around water. He's a big man out there. Because normally when I enter the mosque, man, he's always in the mosque. Like that, when I got there, <laughs> he was there in the mission. So, like, 